So, Ryan. Yeah. I know convention we're doing next. What are we doing next? WizCon. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Do you even know what WizCon is? I don't know, but I saw it on I saw it on, on Skype chat today. Guys, yeah, yeah. tell me what the fuck is WizCon? Well, it turns out WizCon is a real thing, which me... It's my home. Sean and John thought it was just one big joke because like, ah, Wisconsin, Wiscon, ah. And then the professor here. Hello, professor. Hello. Uh, he decided to say that's actually a convention, guys. And we're like, what? So, uh, professor, why don't you tell us what Wiscon is? So, Wiscon is a very distinguished science fiction convention. Um, from back in the, uh, I think, 70s, um, during the counterculture era. Um, so they focus a lot on uh, multi genre. It's mostly science fiction literature. Um, the uh, it it's, should be a lot of fun. I I I was telling the others that we should submit a panel to it. Try to get the the podcast in there. They have a last year they had a beginners podcast. In. Um, you know, I think it'd be a Great one for you to go to, John. Now, oh, jeez, that might be able to go to. That vibrated my brain. God. <laughs> no, it sounded like a buzzer. Like bzz, you're wrong. Tori, Tori's like, Tori's like, I want to go. See, but that's the thing the professor failed to leave out, which we had to find out for ourselves. Is um, it essentially was. Dashcon before it became Dashcon. What? I, well, I mean, with the distinct uh, difference that it's actually a successful convention. Successful sci-fi convention that seems to, uh, depending on your outlook, and I'm going to offend a couple people here, uh, depending on their morals, as such, either... I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, either or, I mean, mm. it's incredibly feminist. Th- there we go, Ryan. There mm-hmm. we go. Yeah, it, it's not the it's not the hey, let's just be equal feminism. It's the rad fem. It's the Tumblr feminism. It's, it's so the, bad. The the ba- the bathroom options are women and about... gender neutral. It's okay. the, let's have panels all about people of color in whatever media here, like people of color, Disney princesses and people of color. I don't know, sci-fi in general fantasy books and shows and movies. It's that kind of stuff. It's very lecture based. Point is, it's not for you. Absolutely. Not. It's for me. So drop me off. Go, go to a pub or something and then pick me up. Theme well, it is Wisconsin. There's Damn plenty it. of pubs. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. So, like, mm. hey, we should totally prank John into getting him there. And with that said, shoot the theme song. Themes are done. Okay, themes are done. Themes are done. Oh my god, I, I fucking hate you guys. I was trying to cue theme song so many times. <laughs> I mean, the the th- story wasn't done, John. I mean, I'm sorry. I did you want to interrupt and talk about your fucking chicken fries again? No, we're not. We're not. We're not. For the sake of Bitpool, we're not going to bring this shit up. You're putting him through therapy, John. I love Bit. I love Bitpooler. He is best husbando. <laughs> <clears throat> Welcome to the Whip Podcast, everybody. Episode twenty six. I'm your host, Black Napple One Hundred and One. With me are three lovelies and a new lovely to the group. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Um. Hello, I am the professor. I'm new here because Jonathan's insane. Um. So he's letting me in here and saying, "Hey, be uncensored." Um. I've already posted things to the Facebook group to make him regret this decision. Um, oh, yeah. I'm looking to continue that trend. Um. Let's see. The um, my reign of science shall be cruel, 
yet knowledgeable, informative. Um, let's see. I accept all applications for test subjects. Uh, you can sign up in the uh, bar on behind on 6th Street in the back. Thank you. Just ask and for the professor. <laughs> yes. And I am Mama Donovan. I am the Texas Steampunk Holdra. And this weekend at RealmsCon, I was Scarlet Witch, Bucky, and Clara Oswald. Hi, I'm Sean, also known as Grunt OP. For the majority of RealmsCon, I was a Team Rocket Grunt. Who'd have thought? I'm Silverfist91, and I am not at RealmsCon. One day, guys, one day. And I'm John. I already set out my name. That was Margarita Man. I was cool. And I was another cause, but we're not going to talk about that. I think we're we going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. So, this is episode 26. We're here to kill an hour of your day. Whether you're watching us to go to bed, trying to kill some time, at school, whatever. Um, this is going to be a recap episode because we were all at RealmsCon, except for Ryan. But Ryan has to be here because, yeah. Because y'all love oh. me. Well, me, yeah. Without you, we're not a podcast. Oh, thanks, guys. Without you, we're unedited footage. Oh, yes. Thanks, Without guys. you, John's we- shaky laptop. Oh, <laughs> thanks, guys. Shaky? You don't don't you mean shitty laptop? Tori, let's get real. My laptop is shitty, not shaky. Oh, thanks, guys. Well, I was being nice to your laptop. Oh no, it's shit, Tori. We all we all know why. Yeah. Okay. Guys. Thanks. Are we, are we making you blush? You're welcome. Yeah, you're making me brush. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. We're making you brush. Uh, oh, shucks, you're making me brush. Oh, I'll make you brush, all right. <laughs> now it's weird, John. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we were all at RealmsCon. We had a f- interesting little adventure, right, to say the least, each one of us, all, yeah. with, all, with, all with a bunch of stories. Since uh, the professor, otherwise known as John, we need to we, hold on. We need to make a, we need to differentiate. How are we going to differentiate John and John? I'm uh, John. It's John. Professor. I assume. Professor. Okay. Yeah, or prof for short. That's fine. Okay. The prof. The prof. The prophet. Oh God, i yeah, I'm not comfortable with profit. That that no. I mean, I mean profit as in P R O F I T. The money. Okay, that works. That works. Profit and loss. I'm totally fine with that. Not 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 religion. We're not bringing religion to this cast again. No, again. Um, the professor. He since you are since you are the special guest. Uh, I'm gonna let you take the reins and tell us how was your realms gone? What did you do? So all right. Um, so let's see. I arrived Friday. Uh, drove in from Austin. Whew. Um, but um, uh, Friday not a lot happened. Um, got to see the room. Uh, met the Dark Tide Comics. Really cool guys. Um. The, if you're in Kingsville, go shop at Dark Tide Comics. Product placement. Um, big highlight there was the de- where it was the podcast panel that you guys had, and I will let you discuss the uh, um, the husbandos and the shouty people and the uh, accommodations later. Foreshadowing. Um, listen later in the podcast for more about what the heck was I just talking about? Um, yeah. Yay. Cool. All right. Uh, but I got to meet other, a lot of other cool people. Um, like I got to meet, uh, Bones Jangles, um, uh, aka Michael Pruitt. I'd only known him online. Uh, he's a steampunk musician. Um, also got to meet a couple of folks in airship, airship, uh, Nikolai. Um, I'd only known them online. Um, and I got to uh, reconnect with a guy I hadn't seen for a while, uh, Doc Zepp, uh, David Springer. Uh, he's also known as, uh, Steampunk Santa. I had, last time I saw him was, uh, IkiCon a couple of years ago. Um, he's a really cool, cool dude like if you just like sit him down and just ask him a random question about texas history he'll go on for hours about it and it's literally crazy. literally yeah. hours i know i was gonna head to a panel and then i just stopped to talk to this guy because i'm like oh hey i have some steampunk questions because i want to get into steampunk two hours i literally stood there for two hours and i yeah. loved every minute of it okay i know he's like the best lecturer ever i mean he's the Someone needs to put him in a university and just have him talk, you know, for a while. I mean, it, it, it's great. It's great. Um, cannot get enough of the guy. Um, but yeah, your podcast was kind of the, the podcast panel was kind of the highlight there. Um, I like some of the cosplayers. Uh, we had the, the Deadpool 
Deadpool, Aqua Girl, um, and some random dude like push up contest. That was cool. Um, Aqua Girl won. Yep, Aqua Girl beat them both. Um, got to meet the the Baymax cosplayer. That was neat. Um, the I got a picture with him. I think that's the only picture of me taken at the con. Um, then uh, most most good stuff though happened Saturday. Saturday was the big day. Um, that was there. Um, Ice Brass Revolution. That is my game. Um, I am a game developer. Um, the um, so I went there, ran two games of it. Um, uh, tabletop RPG. Um, the uh, first one. Uh, you guys weren't there. Uh, we had uh, some people from Gold Coast. The whole idea was, um, uh, slavers are coming in to capture Tishley in uh, the city of Coithwaite, and the explorers are hired to protect uh, one of the high-profile targets, Josephine. Um, so pretty straightforward, you know, guard the target. Um, what was funny, like Josephine is a Tishley. Uh, she's supposed to be an exception in that, you know, she's a performer, she's an entertainer, she's based on um, Gypsy Rose. Um, so she does kind of risque entertainment, which is supposed to be weird for a Tishley to do. However, over the course of the game, we had a guy who was playing a uh, female Tishley, and he basically got the idea of, hey, you know, I guess they all do this. So I'm going to go out of my way to try to seduce the bad guys or like stun them by taking off my clothes and doing racy things. It's like, oh, yeah, I guess. I mean, that works. Cool. Um, one of the funny moments is um, he came up with the idea is, hey, I'm a female Tishley and I have this imposter ability. Why don't I just pretend to be Josephine? And then I had to remind him, well, you can pretend to be Josephine, but what about her clients at night? And he was like, oh, um, well, you know what? That's okay. <laughs> it's like, all right, cool. Uh, hey, if you're if you're willing to role play that, more power to you. Um, last time I ran this game, I actually had the exact same thing happen. I had a female Tishley with imposter say, "Hey, I'll just replace Josephine," and then I reminded him, "Hey, you, you know, there are clients." That player was like, "Oh, okay, no, then we're not doing that because no." So, <laughs> but. In this case, it was like, yeah, no, I'll totally handle the clients. I can do just as well as she can. It's like, I'll right. take one for the team. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of those things. That's just a test of character right there. Like, give people, if you want to know what kind of a person they are, give them that plot. And then when they reach that decision, then, yeah, you can tell what kind of person they'd be. Yeah. Um, so one of the things we're going to do as a result, um, and not just that game, but the two games that followed, um, because like by Sunday everyone was playing the Tishley this way. So what we're probably going to do is um, the Tishley, the slave Tishley in Zonrad. Uh, what we're going to insert in, and it makes sense actually, is they are shamed. They're body shamed by the people there. Like they are very beautiful. They're designed, engineered to be pretty, but in Zonrad they shame them for it. It's like yes, you're prettier than everybody. That's horrible. You should feel bad about that. You should feel bad about being beautiful because you make the rest of us feel bad about being ugly. So it's like they, they very... are inherently base creatures. It's like, oh, you do this because you can't help yourself. You weak willed, slutty person. No. Exactly. So a lot of slut shaming, a lot of body shaming. So in Zonrad, they tend to be very shy. They tend to be very reserved, very prudish. They're very self conscious. So the ones who become free, they realize that, hey, Beauty is a good thing. Why should we feel bad about this? So they become, um, uh, they basically throw off what, uh, the Victorian clothing standards, um, uh, which were a thing back then. It was, you know, it was a steampunk theme. And so they adopt more of a, of, um, uh, a wild or outlandish costume scheme or become more exhibitionist or become more like, you know, naturalist in some ways, which was a movement from in the 1800s as kind of a response to the whole like, you know, oh my god, she showed an ankle. Scandalous. Yeah. You know, so to a, declare. Yes. So that's a, a, a play on that um, kind of deal. So, you know, it's, it's part of their rebellion against it. So that, sh that should be interesting. That should be fun. We have to be careful with it so it doesn't get too R-rated too fast. Because, um, yeah. Um, but that was that was the first game there. And, of course, it was your game. Uh, where you guys were there, we had Steam Engine Intrepid. We had USS Joan of Arc together we had um we had a guy dressed as fury road like joe barnes is his name he was really awesome he didn't play but he watched that was great um joe's, uh, joe's a good friend of mine yeah um 
He was a really good war boy. Yeah. Let him know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so your game had pirates and betrayal and lawn gnomes. Oh, God, it had lawn gnomes. Um, so it's so much betrayal. I know. I, I was thinking on that. John's part and then that freaking tissue. Uh, so, OK, here. So the main story for this plot for the viewers at home is you're in the city of Quiv, which is on the eastern coast of Inam. It's, it's uh, you know, kind of an island city. It's, it's based roughly on New Orleans. It's during their equivalent to Mardi Gras, which is the Grace Show. Um, and you have to stop these two pirate clans from fighting. Or, you know, try to stop them from fighting or at least stop them from blowing up a bunch of civilian areas. So, you know, keep the civilians safe. Um, that's the main plot. You have, you know, you have a dragon pirate who's a sea pirate. So you have Dahlia, the air pirate, one of the iconic villains. Um, and so one of the little things I just threw in there is one of the NPCs, Grunch Melzer. He's obsessed with lawn gnomes. Um, just because he's kind of a conspiracy nut. So he thinks the lawn gnomes are behind it all. Um, and so he talks about how, man, it's so hard to get a lawn gnome. So, you know, what that's supposed to do is just like get you used to the city and, and give a little flavor. It's like, oh, okay. The, um, uh, the lawn gnomes are hard to get. Let's try to catch a lawn gnome. You know, yay. Okay. That's kind of fun. And uh, for beginning players, it gives them use to the mechanics, you know, precision, dodge, all that good stuff. You know, they have to try to catch a lawn gnome. Pretty simple. Um, <laughs> So, this group here goes in, and they actually, and the, to their credit, you guys succeeded at getting the lawn gnome. You guys are the first ones to get the lawn gnome. Uh, it's pretty creative. You know, uh, one of the guys got his uh, feet really sticky. Azucho swooped in. Um, you know, made cut, made a couple attempts. Like Jonathan swooped in there, tried, didn't quite get it. The other guy tried, got it. The lawn gnome started to, you know, ceramic started to slip out. They used a sticky bomb, um, Aqueous, um, who's, I think, uh, Tex Dobie. He helped out. So that was really good teamwork. You guys caught the lawn gnome. Right. So what usually happens then is, okay, you pool your resources, you look at the lawn gnome, you analyze it, you find out what the backstory is, and it's kind of cool and gives you a little more of an Easter egg of the lore of, of the city. We it's, fought over the fate of the lawn gnome. Instead. John decided, hey, Sean... You, I'm gonna be the person. I'm gonna dick with the entire fucking game, all the way up to the bitter fucking end. Yeah, yeah. And instead, everyone's like, "I want the lawn gnome," and it's like, "No, I want the lawn gnome. No, no, I need the lawn gnome." And then we had like two players say, "No, we need to destroy the lawn gnome because clearly they're a source of disharmony." Ah, uh, it became a five-way show of lawn gnome that took two hours. A little nice little diversion, <clears throat> just supposed to set up an interest to the game. Took two hours. It was it was hilarious. Don't get me wrong. I loved every minute of it because it was just I was just sitting back and laughing half the time. But oh my god, it took two hours. So, so we're not a cohesive group. So hold on, hold on. You guys were fighting over a lawn gnome. Yes. No, like, no, let's, let's just put it this way. Like, like I Gnome Chompinski from Left for Dead kind of lawn, lawn gnome. Yes. The was, way. was there something special about the lawn gnome? Was it, it was magic? A thing, Ryan, oh, okay. I had a character that was just mostly built around, hey, I'm researching this particular type of thing so I can free these slaves. I was more or less the Howard Stark of the crickets. Let's say. What does John decide to do for the entirety of the game? Oh, I'm just going to start a fight with Sean. Even after I had the gnome. No, let's just take the gnome away from Sean. Let's just not let him have this. And then it started this two-hour fight because John was like, Well, fuck you, Sean. I'm going to take the gnome. And I was like, No, it's my fucking gnome. I'm going to use it for research and all this other fun stuff. And then the gnome ended up broken. After two hours, the gnome ended up getting broken. Yeah. Okay. John okay. Wanted to Hold be on. In my defense, I wanted money for the gnome. Yeah. See, you greedy little fucking bird. <laughs> yeah. And and Scrunch would have paid you too. It's just, yeah, you guys didn't have to fight over it. Um, it was hilarious. It was good characterization too. Like John's character was antagonistic to Sean's character, and they were both stayed like that for the games. It wasn't any sudden <laughs> kumbaya. You know, it worked. And there were later on consequences to, you know, this early rift, which worked pretty well. And Demona's character, who actually uh, is the one who broke the gnome, uh, yeah, she played a pretty good role later on, too. Um, but, yeah, you guys did find out the secret of gnome. I'm not going to spoil it here. You have to play the game if you want to find out what happened. Ha ha, viewers at home. 
You know, I want to play. I want to play. <laughs> Professor, can I play? What? what? Can I play? Sure. Eventually. Yay. Oh. Yay. Um, right. They, right. We can right. play at WizCon. Anyway. Uh. <laughs> right. But you have, to play the, you have to play the squid person. No. Yes. No. And you have to be a kid. I mean, I can be arranged. And you have to right. squirt ink all over the place. Uh, I mean, of course. Yeah, and also, in that little gnome incident, you find out that my character reacts terribly under pressure. Nope. Just terribly. Yeah. Calm uh, until the circumstance, until I'm in absolute shock, and then I will react poorly. What did John decide to do? Dick with John the entire game. How did that work out, John? Didn't work out very well, now did it? Well, look... I was able to dodge at the very end. I was able to dodge so many hits. So you know where to fuck yourself. <laughs> I killed you, so you can. You didn't kill me. I killed myself. No. He wouldn't let you, you have were... that honor, Sean. Yeah, you were yeah. about to die. I, I will say, like, yeah. Um, but yeah, later on in yeah, so later on, you guys actually got they everyone got to the pirates. Um, there was some interesting discussion. Uh, one of the players actually triggered Dahlia's attack early. Because he was like, I'm going to shut off the generator so we can sneak into the base. And it's like, well, that was the cue Dahlia was waiting for to attack. Ah, oh, well. Um, mm -hmm. So, but that's okay. Um, so, <laughs> giant airship comes in. Lots of fighting, blah, blah, blah. You guys actually were, did not get involved in the main fight. Uh, last time I ran this, um, people were in the warehouse trying to join Jade Scale's crew. Uh, like, they convinced Jade Scale they were going to join. Um, and then Dahlia attacked. So you guys succeeded in um, uh, kind of staying away from most of the blood and guts of it. Um, yeah, like last time, uh, Scrunch actually died in the last version because he got caught in the crossfire, failed to dodge, got ripped apart. Um, so yeah, you guys guys kept Scrunch alive. That's cool. Um, but yeah, you guys also took down the airship, which is good. You guys slammed the airship onto the warehouse like it's supposed to. Um, that was good. Um, but then at the end, ah. <sighs> Basically, there was this whole long stream, and I had trouble following it, of, like, one one side wanted to convince Jade Scale they were on his team, and then John decides, I'm going to shoot an arrow at his head, and he misses. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, cue three-on-one PvP later, and, and you've got, like, Venom dissolving the Zuchio's arm. John was a Zuchio, and it was, like, wing was falling off, and his feet both got bolts in them, and... You know, you, uh, you, he was the eventually, uh, first character to die. Like, first character run out of body points. Um, I've had characters get body effects, like lose all their health, but he's the first character to go all the way to zero on everything. Um, so yay, first death. John gets the first death. Yeah. It was actually, and it was pretty epic too, because you were hanging in there. It's like you had zero body points and you were still alive. Like, the next turn would have killed you, because the next one, the Venom would have kicked in, in which case you would have worn, uh, rolled another maim effect, which probably would have killed you. Um, you know, or at the very least, just left you, like, you have no arm. <clears throat> oh, God, that's right. You left, you lost one of your arms. If you had lost one of your legs and lived, you could have gotten two auto sockets and become an alchemist. Huh? Oh, I want to do that next time. <clears throat> okay. But you're dead. dead. Well, first okay. you got to fuck with Sean again. John, be a be a bird. I'm gonna be a bug. No, I'm gonna straight outright kill you next game. I'm gonna take <laughs> no more chances with you, John. John. Honestly, if you would have pulled that shit, if I was playing with you, I would have killed you too. I mean, my whole objective was just to fuck around. Yeah, and I still would have killed you. Yeah. Okay. I'll I would have probably lit you on fire, John. <laughs> what were you, a bird man? Yeah. I made some fried chicken. I was uh, I was Michael Keaton. <laughs> Birdman. I get it. Ah, uh, nice. The um, I still need to watch that movie. I heard it's, it's really good. good. I do it's too. Really good. The um, but yeah. So that was Saturday's game. That was cool. Um, then we went out to Whataburger and met super special mystery person who you will talk about later in the podcast. So keep listening. Anyway, um, you with the know, is that really annoying when I do that, or is that cool? I don't know. No, I like it. Okay, neat. Um, let's see. Um, oh, then Sunday. Sunday, mostly repeat players had a couple new ones. Um, that it was really cool. Um, had Steam Engine Intrepid back again. Had Gold Coast back again. 
Um, and now when I just opened it up, um, that, that crew, <laughs> I, I opened it up. It was free. They were like, Hey, we've got these four Tishley here. Um, we're going to start a bordello with these four Tishley. So we need a boat. So I'm like, okay, here's a town you could get a boat in. Um, let's, so let me stat this out. Okay. Let's go. So they get there. They see the boat. They see it's there. And like, okay, I wonder how they're going to go for it. Then they're like, Hey, what other businesses are in this town? I'm like, well, according to the pre-written lore, you know, there's this, the Coxius Cabana here in Luxembourg. Mm-hmm. You know, it's owned by, mm-hmm. you know, in Alt, who's has ties to the, uh, local, um, not, not to the local, but the national crime syndicate. You know, he's not known as a great guy. You know, you know, you've met Josephine. Josephine does not like this guy. This reason she doesn't work here. Um, and they're like, Hey, I know. Let's go kill that guy and take his club. I'm like, Oh, uh, guys, there's a boat right there. Right? There's a boat right there. And like, no, no, no. We'll go kill the club owner and take his stuff. That's such a better option. Like, okay, go ahead and try. So a bunch of level ones end up walking into a scenario where you have the club owner and he's being visited by the head of the criminal organization because, you know, the plot is like he's trying to expand. So he's asking the uh, the head of the of Lamara Bunta, which is the criminal organization he's asking for a loan so they walk in on that and pick a fight uh how yeah, convenient fortunately, yeah the player characters fortunately all managed to escape they but yeah that they had fun but it was like guys don't don't trigger super high level encounters when you're level one let that be a lesson like i tried to warn you, but they had fun so that was cool um and we it further established that apparently all Tishley are like really into exhibitionism and so on because they they kept just taking off their clothes to stun people, which is like okay, it's a thing. Uh, see, but- see, I think there's a difference between seduction and try and just taking off your clothes. Yeah, I, the I difference think is a thirty-four roll. Well, I mean, seduction's an art. <laughs> And this it guy is, rolled it a is not an easy category. thing to do. Taking off your clothes is just dumb. <laughs> yeah, I might I might insist on more role playing for seduction next time rather yeah. than just saying I drop my dress. Like, okay. I mean, honest, honestly, but did you shake your hips? <laughs> on, honestly, uh, if I personally was DMing, I would have upped the DC and made it higher than what they rolled. <laughs> Yeah. Think next time. <laughs> oh, the only thing you're doing is for seduction is taking off your clothes. Okay, that's a plus twenty to the DC. <laughs> did you My drop favorite. it all at once, or did you like let it cling to your shoulders first and then drop it? Hmm. Yeah, that's probably a good move. Probably do that. Um, let's see. Oh, I, I like- I've got a bit of experience with GMs and how GMs work. Cool. Oh, I liked it when your character went um, uh, Yandere Tori. That was a good one. <laughs> Um, he stole my or she stole my woman I had yeah. one goal and that was to win the heart of Jessica I saved this Tishley because okay I wasn't in the final battle I was too hurt because John used me as a scale shield because I'm so, a dragon so, so I have scales so just for you folks catching up at home need to follow this again here's a quick little summary of John's character egomaniacal bird per person, only cares about money, dicked over his entire team, died because of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you forgot to mention I won full star scream. That's what I said by betrayed. <clears throat> because full star scream can mean a various amount of different things. Very, full star scream could mean getting the crown and then dying five seconds later. Exactly. I mean, I could have had the crown. But you didn't. You died. Yeah. Uh, which is exactly okay. what happened to Starscream. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, so at some point he betrayed me by using me as a scale shield. I get hit. I'm not dead, but I am too injured to like participate in any fighting. Oh, and I forgot to And at some point, I get seen by the pirates and surrounded. I try to talk my way out of it, saying, oh, I'm the son of a very important... Queen Long, which are the dragon people. I'm like, I'm the son of very important Queen Long. And so um, they'll pay you a lot of money if you keep me alive. Well, they didn't believe it. So I tell them, so I went the Princess Bride route. 
And I was like, no, please, I have to live. I'm in love with a beautiful woman and you can't kill me because it's true love. And (laughs) they decided that, oh, if she's so beautiful, maybe we should capture her and take her to our captain. So I sold out the... I accidentally sold out the girl that I love. Granted, that didn't happen. That almost happened. Oh, here's the thing. I had never even talked to her because this is the guy who was too shy. That's why his goal was ultimately to talk to Jessica and possibly like win her heart. But first of all, he has to talk to her. Okay. So let's, let's stop for a second. Your character is madly in love with a girl. He's never talked to. Mm hmm. And expects the winner and will die for this girl. Yes. Can I say psycho? or? Hey, John, John have, you, have you ever heard of Romeo and Juliet? Uh, I heard That's of exactly a, the same thing. I've heard of a story that's stupid because it promotes young love and death and suicide, but whatever. I mean, well, it's, Romeo and Juliet was more of a dark comedy than it actually was an actual Well, it was thing. a drama, mm-hmm. not a comedy. Oh, it's a I dark mean, comedy if you think about I it. Mean, I mean, Leonardo DiCaprio was great in that movie. In in the traditional sense of theater, it's not a comedy because everyone died in the end. Comedies okay. have happy endings. Dramas have bad endings. Anyway. Leonardo DiCaprio was huh? great in the movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, Leonardo no, DiCaprio no, if, if is everyone, a great actor. What? <clears throat> no, if, if everyone dies but you laugh, it's just it's uh, <laughs> uh, it's just a black comedy. It's yeah. Li- I, I laughed, so I guess... That tells a lot about me. I think that just means you're a b- terrible person, Sean. Okay, oh, so... Established. Anyway, so at some point, I'm too injured to fight, but the Tishley has been, like, well, seduced a whole bunch of people, and she yeah, couldn't shake them off of fight. her until they were distracted by the final fight because the airship was coming down. Yeah, distracted I- everyone. Giving I a giant airship falling out of the sky was a bigger distraction than, hey, look, boobs. Exactly. So I thought, okay, we had our true mission was to make sure that the people in town are safe. So, well, the fighting's already happening here. So we failed to stop the fighting from happening here. What I can do is take this Tishley to safety and go into the town and warn people of the fight so that they can evacuate. I'm taking the Tishley into town, and as soon as I get in there, Jessica shows up, and the Tishley, who I'm rescuing, stabs me in the back and starts seducing her. And it was working. What a bitch. Exactly. So I think, my- I think she was trying to be your wingman and failing at it. Exactly. So I thought, okay, oh, what can I do? What can I do? And then... I realize now that I didn't actually have to slice her. I could have just said she was sick. But I decided, just okay, I'm going to secretly slice her ankles. And then be like, oh, no, she can't go get a drink with you because, oh, she needs to go to the hospital. I have to take her to the hospital. While in, while in Tori's mind, she was like, damn, bitch. <laughs> so... So let me get this straight, Tori. You, like, snuck up behind this guy talking with Jessica. No, 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 no. That's not Uh how it happened. Uh She held the girl in her arms. When Jessica started getting flirty with the Tishley, she pulled the knife and slashed the Achilles heels of this (laughs) poor girl in front of the love interest. The love interest got scared and ran away, and then she left the person to die in the streets. That is what happened. How no did bullshit. you expect this to I work, to Tori? Did you really expect that to work? I told you, my character doesn't respond well under pressure. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, I wonder how you respond under pressure. You know, Professor, I'm starting to think in hindsight, me and Tex had much more of a happier ending than Tori did. Yes, yeah, because you, you, uh, Demona, and Aqueous all ended up uh, joining Jade Scale, and um, even though Aqueous was acknowledged, like you were acknowledged as his pets, Aqueous because Aqueous is also a Chinglong, so you know, dragons are like, oh, you have you know, pet humans. Um, you probably probably had some adventures. You know, your characters got to have pirate adventures. That's kind of cool. Yep. 
Hey, Sean, how about you and I play some of this Ace without those two? Whoa, 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 whoa. That just Sir- sounds like things will go south if we invite them. How about it, Sean? Well, are you going to go Ace and Chill without us? Yeah. yeah. Sir, I, I'll have you know, I play a great game of D&D. I and- hear the exact opposite, John. I mean, I'll, was- I'll, play hum- I'll play human. How about that? That doesn't mean you play a good game of D&D. Don't worry, I won't fuck you over. I'll fuck Sean over. I don't... And I will kill you even quicker, because I'll still be a cricket. You know what? Just to spite you, John, I'll be Sean's friend. <sighs> that also yeah. happens to be an arsonist. I'll be a cricket. I'll be a cricket, too, then. Fuck it. Just so happens I specialize in flamethrowers and molotovs. That's very steampunk, right? Oh, no, John. No, no. See... You've established yourself as the bird person. Continue being the bird person. I'm is dead. It? Professor, that that is steampunk, right? Molotovs and flamethrowers? Yeah, uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Cool, cool. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I just need goggles, right? And I'm set? Yep. Yes. Yeah, Excellent. And buckles. Yeah. We and a corset. Yes. But I'm a gay character. <clears throat> so? But, where are the corset? I mean, fun fact, uh, when we get around to doing armor... Because uh, armor is called a tire in the game. Right. But uh, when we do armor crafting, uh, we're going to call it one, haberdashery, and two, the armor that specifically covers your torso will always be referred to as a corset. So men wear corsets too. Although what, for guys, it looks like a vest. What about trench coats? Trench coats will be a thing. They'll, that'll be a, a separate thing later on. Excellent. Because you, you, can't, you can't carry around Molotovs in a vest. You have to have a coat for that. Exactly. Tail All right. All right. So let's move on to everybody else's topics. But I do want to note, let's just hit the bullet points of RealmsCon and not go into explicit detail. Okay, <clears throat> fine. I'll just hit the bullet points then. Let's not um. talk about how every facet of the con was amazing and how we found everything fun. Let's just hit bullet points because we have questions. Uh, Yeah. Can I just do three more shout outs, though, real quick? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. The, uh, so I want to give a shout out to Ramen Pride. They're the uh, high school anime club from, uh, Mary Carroll, uh, high school. Um, the, uh, they, they were pretty cool, awesome. Got to meet, uh, two of their members, uh, donated a couple books to them. Um, I uh, got some art commission from Rod Thornton, who was there. He's going to be designing some steampunk weapons for the game. Um, he's really awesome. And I also got, uh, a nice, uh, art piece from Art Block Creations of, uh, Tishley. So, yay. You guys are cool. Okay. Okay. So, Sean, since you and I roomed together, you have plenty of stories. So, go ahead. Um. Uh, hmm. Wait. Uh, what? <laughs> we roomed uh, together, so I'm sure you've got plenty of stories. How to incriminate yeah. John further on his own podcast? Um. Uh, I mean, you could say I was I was drinking at the con, which is not. It's not that well, discriminating. That's just. Part well, of the course. Not the Friday, because the Friday you were fucking sober. <laughs> was I? Yeah. I don't. I don't remember if I was. That's a, that's an issue. That's a real big problem. Shit. Oh, John's sober. Yeah. And a con? Well, let's see. Um. Well, there is a well, thing. I was. I was sober. I didn't weed in my mixers then. Well, let's see. Um. The red tide was fun. It. Not a big fan of that type of guest star, but I mean, it, it'll do. I mean, let's see. Also, hmm. Well, Jonathan decided, well, he and I decided it'd be a good idea to eat the, uh, the hollow and the spoopy whopper while we were in Corpus. And this is Lovely, Friday. John. Thank you. This is Friday going into Saturday. <laughs> John wakes up in the morning going, I'm shitting green. I'm shitting green. That's it. Fuck Burger King. I'm never eating there again. <laughs> um, I already fucked up to eat it. I ate today Burger King. Oh, friends? John. We both had, we both I had, the, I had another spooky burger. Fuck me. Will you John. ever be the keeper of your word? John, you have a problem. I do. You you just go on about hating something, and then you just keep going. Because the, the king has me in the vice grip. 
King has mostly more of a vice grip on your intestines than he does anything else. <laughs> Continue. There's that little adventure. And um, there's the panel. Oh, yeah. Panel. That, that was the thing. So I'll describe it from my point of view. He got stuck on the first floor uh, towards the back, actually in the very far back, away from in a, everything. In a, in a corner. In a corner, on the dance floor, with a bench. Doing the panda sore. And, uh, <laughs> hmm, let's see. Oh, they also scheduled us right around the Steam Tower Giraffe concert. And, and right, well. So we were pretty much scheduled just like Constantine. And the Friday night slot at 9 p.m. Um, what else happened? Oh, yeah, that's right. I had a con goer screaming in my ear for a fucking hour. Now, Sean, before we continue, I do need to state the Whip Podcast does not advocate bullying of any person of the, any person of the sort. We do not know this person, so we cannot say anything bad about her per se, and a really well anything too bad. Unless we know, unless we know a person, we'll make fun of him. That being said, kiddo, person, I don't know who you are. Please learn con fucking etiquette, Jesus fucking Christ. Because this wasn't the only panel that she disrupted. There were other. Panels. She decided to disrupt it. But she terrorized the entirety of the con. You know who you are. If you are listening to this and screaming at your monitor, hoping to be a part of the noise that's coming out of your computer speakers right now. Fuck you. I mean, this pr- this kid was so bad. She had a voice actor to call security to kick her out of the dealer's room, and she was crying. Because she did not understand what she had done wrong. So, yeah. So, there's that. So, if you are the person who is being crazy at the convention and someone tells you to stop, just listen and stop. At the same time, if you are with the person who doesn't understand when they've crossed a line... Like, if you're their friend and you went with them, please tell them. Just somebody stop it. Don't just Just, let them do whatever they want. Just slap them and yell at them saying, quit being an annoying little shat. Don't hit them. No, you gotta gotta smack some sense into them. You gotta tell them, stop breaking the law, jackass. Stop breaking... Yeah. Also, um, if you're friend of said person and you let them continue because you think it's quote unquote funny you're a dick yeah, fuck you too because that wasn't funny. I almost went deaf okay Sean anything else at the con oh well, got that rant out of the way um, there was the um, theme song. well there was the ace game that we played and the professor has gone into great detail about it, so I will say, from my point of view, it was a fun game. I hope to play it again soon. hope to get an updated copy of the guidebook, so that way I may be able to DM my own game soon. Yep. Yay! And that it was a very enjoyable experience. Probably one of the better tabletop games I have played in a very long time. Yay! It's a very nice. lovable atmosphere. Like, it's very easy to get into this world and lose yourself in it. Very positive. Very positive vibes. Yay. That is the intent. But after that... Well, you guys were also in the good place, so, yeah. Yeah. And it was after... It was after that. Jonathan, the professor, me... Not Tori. Tori was pursuing other assets. Yeah. <laughs> other ass. Assets. <laughs> And a couple of friends of mine that had stuck around during that game, uh, we all went to Whataburger. And we're all ordering our food. And we all started eating. And then we noticed behind us, a certain person we believed looked like Captain Hook. 
then I glanced and realized something. It was Voltaire. <laughs> nice. So, we all start panicking because we don't know what to do. The professor told us, well, as long as they aren't eating and are in the process of ordering their food, everything's about free game. So that was all we needed to get up and scramble up out of our seats over to there to get a photo. We had to we used the professor's phone to snap a photo. Because Mine John's gave out phone, because John's phone crapped out. In my defense, I was on two percent battery, and I was text. I was messaging Fred. They would not let us have both. Um, you had a choice between Fred and Voltaire, and you chose Fred. I chose my friend. We still made the right choice. For that. We, Ryan, we still both got what we want out of the end of this, so it didn't really matter. I'm just, it's, I'm just messing with him. We were, yeah, we were very thankful that the professor's phone was functioning. Old. Yes, and functioning. Yeah. And it was thanks well, to him we even got the photo. Yeah. So the professor is a part of this experience as well. Yeah, it's a Samsung. It, they have great battery life. Buy Samsung. Screw iPhone. Right. Yeah. Please. Right. So as we took the photo, Jonathan noticed it more than I did because, well, when you smoke, you kind of lose a sense of smell. But after we snapped the photo, Jonathan looked at me and said, dude, he was hammered. Mm hmm. <laughs> I can smell it. Coming from coming from a semi-professional alcoholic, uh, alcoholic, alcoholic. That came out weird. Uh, I could smell the I could smell the liquor on him, and I think it was rum. I could smell the rum on him. I mean, that doesn't mean he's hammered. It just means he's been drinking. No, no, he, no, he was. Okay. No, no, because no, understand, no. the number ninety three placard made its way into the picture because as we were getting all settled, he lightly caressed the back of my shoulder, held up the number ninety three placard, and said, "I'm going to give some support to ninety three." <laughs> <laughs> we snapped the photo. Well, none of us got the joke what? until we saw the picture. Yes, none of us got the joke until we were looking over the photo. I'm like, oh my god, he held up the sign. That's fucking awesome. Okay. <sighs> yeah. So, so he was caressing you. Did you like it? Oh, it caught me by surprise. I'm not gonna lie. Like, Have ooh, you been Voltaire is Voltaire is feeling me up. Voltaire Senpai. Oh no, wait, that means Colleen will be after him. No, shit. <laughs> she, she can't hear this. She can't hear this. Sean, don't tell her this story. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> damn it, Sean, how We're did gonna... she let you back into the house <laughs> since wait, you had wait. another smell on you? Ooh, we, we're gonna. Voltaire, Voltaire, watch out. Colleen's after you. Oh no. Well, that's because, you know, cigarette smoke can cover up a lot of things. It's true. And I, discard, and I discarded my clothing the minute I got into the house. But Sean, he can't hide the scent of another man. <laughs> okay, Sean. Go. I could just the ima oh, I'm sorry, but I could just imagine you just stepping in and then Colleen just going <laughs> You've been hanging out with Voltaire, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> How do Which you know do? what he smells like? Don't question me. Yeah, You've been hanging out with him. <laughs> he probably smells like a early 2000s hot topic. That's why. <laughs> and the thing is, wow. Way to oust, our, way to oust him, dude. Wow. The thing is, he also smelled of cologne as well. Cologne. <laughs> cologne. Okay. So we were a combination. We were a combination of alcohol, cologne, and cigarette smoke, prevalent from my end. <laughs> it was a fun experience. Thank you again, Professor. By the way, for uh, getting that photo. Thank no you. No worries. I only regret not joining in because I found out later that he actually. Because at first I was like, "Oh, Voltaire. Yeah, I know he's one of the music guests. He's not someone I'm super into." Found out later, he does actually do several songs that I really like. So I'm like, oh, I actually should have gotten a photo with him. Oh, well. Eh. There's always next time. 
I'm sure once okay. Colleen has him locked in her, in the basement there from suffering, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll get a photo then. In Texas, we don't believe in basements. We believe in closets, no. Attics? Uh, okay. we have, no, we in Texas, we have attics. We have attics. Don't worry about it. Wait, what? You don't believe in basements? That's so weird. It's flooding here. What are you okay. Thinking? Hide in the fucking basement? Yeah, that's smart. You think it doesn't flood here? No. You have cheese. You have fondue. Figure it out. Anyway, that's, uh... Oh, sure. wait. Hold on. I'm forgetting another story here, right quickly. This is one I can't believe I glanced over. Um. So, my mom was volunteering for CASA this year. It's a great organization. It's a great charity. She totally... Supported in any way possible in, in the South Texas area. So she was doing raffles for stuff this year. Unbeknownst to anyone here, Kevin Sorbo walked up to the table, filled out a raffle ticket, and put it in the jar. <gasps> My mom's a big Hercules fan. Kevin but, uh, Sorbo? Yes, Kevin Sorbo. I later get a text at the convention. My mom says, Well, actually, hold on. What are can't pull up my phone. Right. I'd actually read off the text off the phone, but I can't find my phone right now at the moment, but it's fine. She said, um, guess whose number I got the call and who guess who won the raffle? And I was like, Kevin Sorbo? He's like, yeah, I got his phone number and I got to call it. So, in short, my mom got a photo of Kevin Sorbo. Uh, my mom also got a phone number of Kevin Sorbo. So, uh, Hollywood dead. Yeah. Sean, Sean Sorbo. <laughs> that might be a thing. <laughs> Colleen in the background. <laughs> 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 I still can't get over that Sean Sorbo. She called, Tori's losing her shit over a really stupid joke, but whatever. It looks fine. No, it's just the very idea um, of <laughs> being the stepson of Hercules. Uh, I, mean, I, I mean, I guess Tori's not that funny. This is a meme. This nay, is a father, funny picture. I, nay, I father. Mean, I will not do the 12 labors today. For it is Saturday, and I has plans with my comrades. I mean, see, then he just thing. throws you out a window. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a serious thing. I mean, Sean could be the next Hercules. <laughs> so, and Colleen could be Xena. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, it's off the table. My future's looking pretty bright. No, Sean. <laughs> But if, you, if okay, if Colleen is a uh, Xena, does that mean I can be Gabrielle? Oh yes. my! Whatever, whatever the fuck you want to be, I don't care. Does that mean I get to be that psychic guy that shows up every few episodes? No, Ryan, you get Doctor? to be Hades. I can be what? No, Ryan, you get to be Hades. Oh. Okay. Um. So, I'm but on a, on, a, on a real note, Sean, when you get that Hollywood money, though, that dead Hollywood money. Are you gonna move Brian Brian down from Wisconsin to Texas? Move him. I'll buy him a house. I'll live in it. Yay, roomies. <laughs> okay. So those were your those were the tales of Sean Sorbo. Anything else, Sean? Do you want to Um, no. Other than that, it was a very eventful, very eventful. Tori. In 20 words or less, describe the con. I met a Bucky. Oh. Okay, but no, the story starts on Friday at the at our WIP podcast panel because we were answering questions. So the question that was picked out of our tissue box was, who is no, no, best? No, no, no. It's the question box, not the tissue box. Gotta well, stress that. Fine. Hold What's the, the question, question box, box, the tissue box? You sh shut your whore mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, we picked one out, and it said, who is best waifu? 
or slash husbando, which was actually put in by the professor. Yep. I didn't know it would go over so well. Okay, so John and Sean start um, thinking and answering who their waifu is, and <laughs> I'm contemplating who my husbando is, or waifu, because I know it you was had just to being contemplate rhetorical. It? Well, so I was thinking, it's like, oh man, who is it? Who is it? I'm like, what's a good answer to represent me? And then straight across from the convention hall, I see the most awesome Winter Soldier cosplayer. He had everything. He had the hair and the arm and the leather coat and just, oh my gosh. So I yanked the microphone out of Jonathan's hand because like he was trying to keep the microphone from me. So I yank it and I was like, I'll tell you who my husbando is. My husbando is Bucky Barnes. Like that one over there. And I point directly across to the guy. And because he's such a good sport, he comes over to the booth. And we do this funny little slow motion running. Like, you know, in all the movies. And we hug. And it's all funny and stuff. And he hangs around for a little bit. So that was Friday. And I thought, oh, that was, that guy had a really cool costume. It was awesome. Okay, Saturday, I am also dressed up as a Winter Soldier, and as I'm leaving the In Living Cosplay show, which is which was a really funny show, it's always great to see Concept Galaxy and uh, Breakdancing Kakashi doing exactly that. So, after the show, I run into him again, and he's like, hey, cool, I really like your costume. Uh, do you think we could take a picture later? And I go, oh, yeah, sure, because he's still wearing his. And so that was after the cause that was after in living cosplay. And so then I, I head straight to the uh, ice brass revolution panel or the game. And we're there for a couple hours because, well, we were there trying to set up our characters. So, um, like about two hours into setting up, I have my character down, but everyone else needs to finish. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go outside for a little bit. Hopefully that hot guy is still out there because we were, I was supposed to see him later so that we could take a picture. As soon as I leave the room, like 30 seconds after I leave the room to walk around, he shows up and he's like, hey, I'm like, oh, it's you. And so we talk a little bit and he wasn't in his Bucky cosplay anymore. He was in a straight jacket. And I asked, oh, what what costume is this? It's like, oh, it's just a straight jacket, because I can. Because that's totally normal. I mean... Yeah. For a convention, yes. Mm-hmm. I don't think it is. I mean, it, it's not really, but, you know, whatever. I mean, maybe if he was doing a Joker in a, or a, in a jo- straight jacket, or... Or tra- uh, Psycho Mantis. Or Hannibal Lecter, even. But I mean, I want to wear, I want to wear a fucking um straight like, jacket. No, it's just my straight jacket that I wear every once in a while. Doing <laughs> <laughs> a little fidget. <laughs> <laughs> so he takes a picture of me in um my costume, and he's like, "Hey, are you going to the rave tonight?" And I go, "Oh yeah, sure, I'll be there." So, mm, girl, I, yeah, I know. I go back into the room like, oh. I'm gonna see that I'm hot guy have at the rave. Sex. That is not what I was thinking. Shut up, liar! Don't lie. I get to fuck you, the Bucky. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, we play the game, and the race started at about twelve o'clock. It started at midnight, but our game got off at like um at twelve twenty or something. Especially since at that point in the game at when we hit 12 o'clock, it was just John being a bitch and not dying. So I'm like, come on! I have to... And I was like, come on, I have to meet a hot guy at the rave. Like, I, don't... I, I like how this progressed from being a cute Bucky cosplayer to the hot guy. Right. Mm-hmm. Somebody's thirsty. <laughs> Did he okay, quench? So eventually- did he quench your thirst? Yeah. Did he? Yeah. Did you have the sex? No, I didn't. Did you have a good rest stop at Bucky's? Eh. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Professor, I will have none of the, have none of those puns in this podcast. Oh, I will. Oh. You're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so after the game is over, I go up to the rave. The line is really long to get in, so I wait in there in that line. I finally get in. I'm look around for him for like. I don't know, 30 minutes, go around the room about twice. It's so easy to find people in the dark room in a rave. And so I dance for a little bit because, you know, I just got to get my groove on. And I thought, oh, well, I guess he's not here. Maybe he left at some point. So I leave and I go down to the Hitalia panel for Hitalia shenanigans. I go back upstairs at 2.30 and he was there <gasps> leaving the room because he stayed there for the whole rave. I find out later that he saw me at the rave and he took a picture of me it's while I was creepy. dancing. Not awkward at he, all. But he didn't say hi to me. I was like, uh it's totally not creepy. Hi. I mean, he he told he had his hands in a straight jacket, so I mean well, Wait, he had okay. His hands in a straight jacket. How did he take the picture? <laughs> Look, he's that good apparently. He's like he's fucking Houdini. <laughs> That's his cosplay. Qu- it's a question. Did did he was it just, was his arms free or was they were they tied up? No, his arms were free. Oh, he he was cosplaying fucking Houdini. Okay, I I just have expect him like his arms like all wrapped up and around him. No, straight jacket style. Yeah, I know, but they were they were undone. Both the immersion. And so, uh, he catches me. He's like, "Oh, hey!" And I'm like, "Hey!" And he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go out to the smoke deck. You can come with me if you want." I'm like, "Okay." So I go after and we talk a little bit and talk. We talk. We talk a little bit and then my ride showed up, so I had to go. But now I'm following him on Tumblr and his Instagram and his oh. Facebook. So <laughs> that's why I didn't go eat Water Burger because I had to pursue the Bucky. Shouldn't have said that last thing, Tori. And Facebook. Yep. Great, you just you just ruined it, Tori. You told him that he's on Facebook. Well, I didn't say his name. You told him beforehand. Tell his nickname. No, she said she said his first name and his nickname. I remember Shit. this. Don't do anything, guys. I'm serious. I won't do anything. I'm so serial yeah, right now. I can't vouch for John. John will probably do something. Maybe. Oh. oh, that's who he is. Oh, okay. No, come oh, on. Wait. You don't know. You're lying to me. No, I'm looking at his Facebook profile right now. Oh. The, uh, oh, wait, I you said, found one? Yeah, I, I have several friends in common with him, turns out. Great. Huh. Great. Okay. Continue, Tori. Let's, let's move on from this fucking guy. Oh, hey, okay. there's the photo of you at the... Um, there's the photo of you at uh, the rave, Tori. That's a lie, because he only put that on Tumblr. No, it's right here. I'll tag you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm John, looking right at it. It's, it's weird. John, I'll have you know you are the best. <laughs> okay, Tori, let's finish. Let's wrap it up on your end. Okay, so that was Friday and Saturday. I didn't see him on Sunday, but Sunday is when I got the real booty. Okay, wait, That's- wait, before you start that, I got a question. Okay. So, so Tori, if you would have had the sex with this Bucky, would you have had him wear his Bucky cosplay? He doesn't have to, but I have a feeling he would have made me wear mine. So. Oh, whoa. Bonus point question, would would you both have worn it at the same time? Wow, we. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new response. Uh, probably. I mean, why not? And it, and a little situation. bit of extra credit. Would you have found a Steven to watch off the side? <laughs> 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 okay, All right, no. I've gone. I've gone too far. I apologize. Yeah, it's like no. I'm done. I'm sorry. I'm done. It's where I draw the line. Would you have had like German music playing in the background? What? Because they're you know, Hydra, you know. Oh, right. Have Rom- I just have some Romstein playing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Dude. would one of you bend the brainwashed one and the other be the fixed one? 
<laughs> who's fixed? <laughs> who's fixed? <laughs> like, like the nod brainwash, like he remembers. Uh, hopefully... Would you have know. been the brainwashed one, Tori? I probably would have been the brainwashed one. Oh I'd be like, how did I end up here? Oh my. Oh. Tori, let's oh. not go down that path. How did well, you... Whoa. That didn't mean me! Okay. Whoa! This we guy didn't make it, is getting we some make weird it. fantasies going on in here. We didn't make it do a damn thing. We're not the one who called in 20 Hydra agents into the room. Oh, that's it. I'm putting a stop to this crap right now. Let's move <laughs> the topic along. Okay, I was talking about how on Sunday, when it said I got the real booty, okay. I mean that I got a $10 grab bag that said Fangirl on it, and it was full of Avengers art and stickers, and it had all of my ships on it, so yeah. I looked out. I found the treasure chest. And I also got some neat trading cards from OK Movies, but they had my favorite scenes in them, so it was all good. Whoa, Roger Ma- R- Roger Rabbit's an amazing movie. It is. Oh, I meant Iron Man 2. Oh, yeah, it's not as good as the other two, but... Yeah. Exactly, so I'm like, yeah, it's an okay movie. Maybe still I'll good, it, still I mean, good. I like, I like the part of Iron Man 2 where they bastardize Whiplash and Crimson Dynamo. Right. But you know, whatever. Yeah. Wait, Crimson Dynamo? Yeah, Yeah. that that Russian guy was supposed to be Crimson Dynamo, but oh. they said, we're going to put Crimson Dynamo and Whiplash in one character. Wait, What? Yeah. yeah, dude, the whips. Well, I got yeah. whiplash, but and, and then Crimson yeah. Dynamo being a Russian, being a Russian guy who comes to America to try to take over, take Tony Stark. Crimson yeah. Dynamo. Yeah, that whole backstory where it's like my your father betrayed my father. My father was researching um, power armor as well over here, in Mother Russia. But that's Crimson Dynamo's uh, backstory. So I had Crimson because... Dynamo's backstory with Whiplash's aesthetic because Whiplash because... is a pretty lame character. So. He had yeah. whips. Yeah. That's because it. everything is Howard Stark's fault. I mean, kind of. It's not Tony's, it's Howard's. Cancer. It's always Howard's. Cancer, AIDS, Howard Stark. Okay, so I guess it's my turn to tell, to tell stories. Shit, I had a question, but I forgot okay. it. Which, what, what's your question? I forgot it. Fuck. Good job. Fun. When you remember, just go ahead. And... Fuck. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll come back. I'm, I'm, I'll be right back. Who cool. you're going? Like, did everyone take off? Um, apparently Sean's mad. Oh, because we because we, we mentioned the thing that should not be mentioned. Oh, <laughs> hold on, hold on. This is oh my god! I just realized this is before Ryan and before this is before Ryan and before John. But wait, the I the fix- infamous fan fiction. I hold keep on. hearing about what's on the no. I'm gonna stop. I'm not checking out the page. Um, Wait, hold on. Let me see it first. Let me see it first. Okay, hold up. Hold up. Sorry, everybody. We're taking a quick little. We're taking a quick little pause in the podcast because uh, breaking Col- news. Colleen posted. Something what on- the fuck? Hold on. I gotta see this too. I gotta ask. Who is that? That's no. We're not. We're not even. We can't. I won't. <laughs> I. <laughs> no, Colleen. Mm. Because the funny part of the joke is, I like the other character in question. I fucking don't. Who the fucking do? Let's let's not talk about this because uh, you know, showing talking about a picture on an audio podcast is the best kind of thing to oh, do. You know, if they yes. happen to like our podcast page, you know, the Whip Podcast on Facebook, they can totally see all the updates and all the cool stuff we post on there. Hey. Sorry, just to just to let you know, the picture's on the podcast page, but I'm taking it down. Just for privacy. No. I see it. Yeah, well, I mean, up. it's not the worst thing that's been posted on as of recently. No, but for, 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 for privacy's sake. Thanks to the professor. Oh, whoops. Yeah, we, don't worry. Um, my quick, my, <laughs> quick little, my quick little thing about the about the con, because we're, we killed a lot, we wasted a lot of time talking about a lot of fun stuff. Um, is it right. is it wasting time if we're having a good time? Not really. John but Lennon I, said, "Good time wasted is not wasted." John John Lennon said also, "Yoko not in the face." <laughs> John John Lennon also said, "Shut the fuck, John. Let's continue." But John, mere, mere I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure he said that to John McCartney at one point in time. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, quick things. Oh, Friday. No. <laughs> Friday was our Friday was our podcast panel, which, as Sean said, we got the shaft on that one pretty bad. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not saying that I wouldn't want to do another panel there, but uh, to everybody who to, to the realms con officials who might be listening next year, please don't hurt us that bad because you put us in between two time slots that were gonna kill us. You put us in a corner of a room and you didn't give us just saying. Yeah. Other than mm-hmm. that, um, circumstances how the comp panel went, we had we had fun. Yeah, thank you, John, for helping us out. The people who stayed for the panel, thank you. Um, we had a great time interacting with all the people who were there. We had a little pre little dance off or something in the beginning before the panel started, and then we started collecting questions. Uh, there was the Nightmare Girl, but that's whole other level of insanity. Uh, for Saturday, Saturday was a whole thing. Uh, to those of you who are on the podcast page, you need, you probably already saw the picture. It's, it's been up for a while. I cosplay Rose Quartz. <laughs> and Rose damn girl, you look good. Yeah. You're the sexiest was, mama in the universe. Shut the fuck. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. The lipstick was, was very well done. Shout out to whoever did your makeup. Yeah, not Tori. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> me. I I really messed up the first time. Yeah, you don't fucking say. Um, yeah, I caused my rose quartz. It was fun. It was kind of fun initially, and then it got to be a big trial because it was uncomfortable as fuck, and the wig was heavy. And then sexual harassment. Um, at the, at the dealer's room, I got my ass pinched by an old man. <laughs> oh my! Did, didn't like didn't like any one of it because he really went in there and pinched it, and I was like, and I turned Ooh. around. No, like it hurts. Not like a little playful pinch, like ooh, like when I pinch Ryan, but you know. Hey. But uh, it was like an actual like he went in there with two with both fingers and t- t- twisted the skin, yeah. to which oh. I turned. To which I turned around and said, hey, what the fuck? But in my most aggressive man voice, because I figured that'd be kind of funny. To which the guy goes full hand kill and he goes, oh, God. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Uh, and the guy runs away. At that point, I was already really sick of the cosplay. So I just took up the wig and told my, told my, friend, told my friend Rachel, I'm fucking done. Fuck this bullshit. I had an Aaron Hansen meltdown. I can't help. I can't handle being this sexy. So, moral of the story is, I can honestly say that I was objectified as a person at a con for dressing as a woman. So, take that, people. Just because they're dressed sexy doesn't mean you're allowed to touch I'm them. I'm not sexy. I look like trash. You were Don't play sexy. Is not sexy. Hey, hey, John. Bad. Don't sell yourself short. Okay, Professor, on ah. a scale from one to ten, how trashy did I look? Oh, tr- um, trashy, trashy. Yeah, one being like the least, and ten being the, like trashy. So on a scale of like one to Honey Boo Boo's mother, basically. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Calm well, down. We said oh. one to ten, not one to one thousand. Oh, oh okay. Whoa, Sorry. shots fired, Tori. Pew 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 pew. Um, let's see. I, I don't know. Now, in terms of trashy, it didn't look that bad. I mean, the lipstick was fairly neat. Uh, the wig was clearly cared for. I mean, okay, the wig was a little out of place. I know uh, most cosplayers would have tried to do a better job about like combing the wig and styling the wig and getting it to stay straight. So we threw could... it on his head. Yeah, That's we why. didn't. We didn't have a wig cap. Yeah. So that. W- so you lose points for that one uh, for good cosplay etiquette. Uh, the dress itself, though, was was pretty good. Um, I mean, you you've mentioned a, a couple times like how it was slipping in bad places and because it was hemmed weird and like the straps and so on. So um, we made those straps. Those were impromptu straps. Because I took want the ribbon straps. that I got for it to tie the 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 grommets in the back, and then I just cut two strands and pinned them to the dress so that he could have straps because. He doesn't have the boobies to keep it up naturally. Of course I don't. I'm like a solid B cup. 
Right. Yeah. I'm not like, so, I'm not like Tori. Yeah. So I I'd, I'd go with uh I I'd probably go with like uh, l- less than a 5. So maybe like 3 or 4. God, I've seen worse. Uh, when it comes to trashy cosplay, like no, I've seen worse. I've seen way worse. Um been doing cons for long enough to see much much worse. Um but it's just disheveled as opposed to trashy. Okay. I'll take that, I guess. I don't know how to feel about disheveled. Um, Saturday was Rose Quartz. I switched back to Margarita Man. We did ice. That was really fun. <laughs> Got to be Volt here. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Sunday was cool because we got to hang out with Fred. Fred was there with Cape. We uh, talked and talked and talked and chilled. I gave Kate a drink. She drank it. That was fun. Fred pussied out like a puss because he was like, I don't want to I don't want to be the drunk one. And I'm like, Fred, you're not driving. Fred, you can't drive. And he's like, but still. Uh, yeah. Oh, very scared the fuck out of me. Why? Uh, uh, there was a shit ton of fairies and I don't like fairies. Not because I don't approve of their lifestyle choice. More like I don't know who's in the costume. So that creeps the fuck out of me. And you invited them over to our table. I was in the I was in the moments, and but there was that one furry that almost hit a baby. At, when we were talking to Fred, Sean, remember? <laughs> oh yeah. I had my bow staff that I make because I'm totally cool, and um, the furry proceeds to stop our conversation. I cringe in fear because I'm like I don't know what to do, and then the, the furry asks for my bow staff, and I go sure. The furry takes it and spins it and almost hits a baby. Fred loses his shit. And I'm like, and so (laughs) Fred's like laughing and I go, Fred, are you advocating? Are you advocating for the, for the attempted baby murder? And he goes, no. And I go, so you want babies to get hit? And he couldn't answer that question. So just, just saying, uh, aside from that, that's pretty much the con. I had a great time hanging out with friends, getting drunk, no real con drama this year, except for the small incident we had, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Loud person in audience isn't really too bad. There's worse. Loud person who participates in the Party Quirks game from Whose Line Is It Anyway and just stares blankly when they're trying to explain the rules to her. Like, you volunteered to play and you have no idea how it works. And so you just stand there with, like... The most vacant expression. She did end up guessing people, but she didn't, like, act with them. Of course, this girl clearly doesn't know how to act, so... Was this the same person? Yes. Yes, it was the same person. Oh my. Okay, so that's RealmsCon. You were fun. Hopefully next year we get to go. Hopefully next year we have a panel, an actual panel. We'll see. Maybe next year Ryan can go... Okay, right. We're, we're already we're already promising San Japan. We can't promise two. Hey, yeah. I mean, unless you moved on to Texas, if something happens, unless you stay, happens. have an extended period of time where you stay there from like August to early October. I was gonna say, isn't that like multiple months apart? Yes. Mm-hmm. I, well, actually, uh, next next year, the two are much closer together than normal because San Japan will be Labor Day weekend. And RealmsCon is... Oh, so actually, next year, it's only one month apart. And that's probably going to be one of the few times it'll only be one month apart. Maybe oh, we're... man. And, uh, how, yeah. how am I supposed to re- procure money in that time? Well, ask, I mean, ask. you can find your Bucky friend. <laughs> he can hook you up, I'm Taft? sure. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what Taft is. Like the president? William Howard Taft? Yes. Taft is a city. Oh, okay. Okay. Was it was it named else. after President William Howard Taft? No. I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Enough silliness. We got questions. I, I uh, only know of that name because of Game Grumps, by the way. <laughs> so at the con, I um, had about five question boxes out. Three at three at tables, and I want to say thank you to. Uh, hold on. Where are their cards? I had business cards. Yay, business I want to I want to say thank you to jamsandwich.net and to uh Bowman Rachel Bowman otherwise known as Bowman Illustrators and Inu Jasha. They were really cool to let me put a box on their table 
And yeah, I got questions from them. So check out their check out their links on the on, on the description down below. They do great art, and some of them they all do like commissions, buttons, all sorts of shit. You know, Josh does decals and sells pillows. So yeah. So we got we got maybe like fifty plus questions. We're only gonna do five tonight. So I'm just gonna pull, and I took the, took the effort to actually just separate them into color. So I'm just gonna go into each box and pull out pull out a question. Same colors as uh, same colors. Or? Same same colors as we had at the con, except I organized them a little better. So it's like one box are full of pink ones, one box full of or blue, one one box full of pink ah. and orange. <sighs> what do your balls taste like? Chocolate salty balls. Hey, everybody, have you seen my balls? They're big, salty, and round. <laughs> <laughs> Tori, you, uh, unless you got balls, I don't think you get them. Mouth. Put them in your mouth. They taste like air. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Those, are some, those are some really clean balls. You, need a, you, should see, you should see a doctor about that. That's not normal. If they I taste mean, like air? They taste yeah. like air because yeah, that's, that's not the only normal. thing that... That's the only thing that's there. So it's, it's, not, like, it's not normal. So, so it tastes like pollution. <laughs> yes. Go to a doc- doctor. My balls taste like air. You're a woman, Tori. <laughs> uh, Help well, me! My yeah. balls are inside of my body. Those I mean, are ovaries. I mean, they, <laughs> they were, that's appropriate. <laughs> what? Uh, the ovaries. biology breaks. Anyway, but mine are uh, Alec Baldwin's sweaty cheese balls. Oh. oh. <laughs> it's just venti cheese balls. Yes, everyone loves my sweaty balls. <laughs> Would you like to taste my sweaty balls? Sean, how, what do your balls taste like? All the good things are taken. <laughs> just a vinegar. Yeah. Ew. Um, no. Tastes like, you know, when you accidentally mix salt with pancake batter. What the fuck? <laughs> Wait, have you accidentally mixed salt with pancake batter before? I had a friend who had, and he served us pancakes one day. <laughs> and did he say it tasted <laughs> like balls? He's like, like, Sean, this tastes like your balls. That's what? That's, that's ridiculous. Like- You're right. Um... That's how that conversation went down. <laughs> My response is it tastes like your cat. Um, it's a Billy and Mandy joke. Don't worry. I'm concerned now. You should be. If you have a cat, you should taste it. Brian, since you have a little kitty, uh, maybe you would like looking at my cat. I'm pretty right sure now. that's not the kind of cat they mean. <laughs> sure, 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 Tori. Okay, next question. What is your favorite anime? Mm. Don't overthink it. Just first first thing that comes into your head. Tiger and Bunny. Because it's oh. superheroes plus anime. Plus gay boys. Plus gay. Exactly. So like what's not to love? Okay. Sean? Uh, um uh 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 Middle Gear Solid. Shit. <laughs> Shit, my balls. That's going to be that blue six thingy. Blue sub number six. Oh, Brian. I, oh, well. I'll go with uh, Read or Die. Uh, Yumiko Reedman. Oh, yes. Brian, anime, go. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Jackie Chan Adventures. Shit. <laughs> Name five cartoons or five anime that's not Jackie Chan Adventures. Oh, okay. <laughs> Food Wars, uh, Full Metal Alchemist, Dragon Ball Z, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, Jake Jane Adventures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, love that meme. Okay, next question of the night. Who is Steve? Oh, he's awesome, Steve. He's awesome. Yeah. He's part of my army. My yeah. army of Steves. Hey, hey, little Karibo reference. Yeah. Yeah. This is the guy. Owes me money. What? Why does little Karibo owe you money? No, the Steve owes me money. Oh. And what is Steve <laughs> Karibo? What is Steve Karibo owe you money? Steve Karibo? Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not Martin it's not Martin Bill any. Fuck that. It's Steve Karibo. What are you, where are you guys at? Scrubs? 
Oh, I'm mean, sorry. I know a different Steve. I apologize. I apologize for assuming you, Jonathan, with acknowledging a different Steve. Tori, who's Steve? It's the Star Spangled Man with a plan. Is he, is he watching you and Bucky getting it on? Uh, yes. Excellent. Okay, next question. We got two more. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh. I'm saving this one for later. Tori's going to love this one. Is she, I know her answer. Mm-hmm. I'm going to change the wording a little bit because I don't like how it was worded. Which male actor would you let would you let go down on you? <laughs> Which male actor would you let you go let down, on down you? on you? The, the, there's a word I'm gonna type into the I'm gonna type it and I don't like saying that word. So I'm just gonna put there. There Rape. we go. Rape. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. <laughs> Which male actor would you let rape you? <laughs> That's an oxymoron. Yeah. Like that's a. I mean, there's rape fantasies. I but mean, that's different. That's, I'm allowing you. We agreed that I was going to keep saying no, and you were going to keep doing it anyway, unless I called a safe word. Like basically, I agree to let you ravish me, mm-hmm. but Wait, who yeah, it? it's not the same thing. No. Okay. No. Okay. Well, I don't like. I don't want to say rape because I don't think I'll. You just said it. it. Yeah. Well, I don't want to say. I don't want to use it in the context of someone raping us. I don't think that's funny. But which male actor would you like? No, it can be funny. It can be funny. Elmer Fudd. There you go. Now it's funny. Uh, (laughs) Because that doesn't have to do with any actual people. Male actor. Okay. Okay. Whatever. Okay. I know what you mean. I I like your substitution. Going down. Okay. Go. Tori, who would you like go down on you? Every single Avenger. All of them. Even the Hulk? (laughs) Even the Hulk. Oh. Wait, which one? Mark Ruffalo or Edward Norton? Oh, damn it. You're going to make me choose? Okay, fine. Ed Norton. You can't have both. Mm, that's a good choice. Fine. Ed Norton. Okay. I'm a Fight Club guy, because apparently in Fight Club, he's amazing at that kind of thing. Even right. if he doesn't realize he's the one who's amazing at that kind of thing. Brian Mill actor, go. Uh... So wait, is it going down on me or raping me? Going, going down. Oh. Okay, he'll take you by the fireside. How about that? Oh, okay. Mm. Come back to me. Sean. What's the question? Which male actor would you let take would you let take you by the fireside? Mm. Mm. William Defoe. Oh, that's a good That's a That's a good choice. That's a really oh. good I He's like so that. scary. Okay, fine. <laughs> he Sounds is scary. Oh, he is, he, fine. He, he... Be the Gwen Stacy from Sin's Past who lets Norman Osborn go down on you. We don't talk about Sin's Past. Think about it, hero. <laughs> okay, Sean, it's your turn. I mean, it's your turn, Ryan. Um, shit, I just had... Oh, oh, Dean from Supernatural. Okay. I respect that. Terry Crews. Hmm. I'd probably hmm. go with RuPaul. Is that, or is that cheating? <laughs> Wait. That name sounds too familiar. Who is RuPaul? Oh, you sneaky. RuPaul, you know. Work, you gotta work it, girl. Hold on, I gotta look this up. That's not cheating. RuPaul it counts. with the drag race. It counts. Kinda. I, I don't know. We need context. It is for anyone who could settle this argument. Does RuPaul count as a male actor? I mean, like does comments, he does um, he identify as a male? Um, uh, like, comment, subscribe, or leave a comment on the below if he counts. I don't know. Okay, wow. so last question. This is the last question for the night, guys. Before we sign off, make this one, make this one count. <laughs> what never fails to live any party for you? Say that one again? One never fails to liven up a party for you. Booze. Okay. That's that's obvious. Booze. Oh, that's no. o- not obvious. Uh, Just dance. When you're really drunk. Uh, the karaoke machine. 
Are you singing by yourself, Tori? Because everyone hates fucking karaoke. I like karaoke. I like karaoke. I like karaoke. What? Oh, well, I'm the I'm the only one who hates karaoke. Fuck me then. Yes, you are. Yeah, because you're old man John who hates <laughs> loud noises and wants to be left in peace with your seven cats. I'm not you, Sean. What fails? Whatever fails to liven up a party. What? What never fails to liven up a party? Oh. You know, when you have that one friend who you don't understand why you take him out to parties anymore, but you do it because he's going through a tough time, and you really like him, and you really want to like him and continue to like him because he's a good guy, and then he lights his balls on fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do never, you have a friend that like, lit his balls on fire? High school was a very fun time for me, Ryan. Oh, dude, this was at Moody? This was a certain... I can't say names, but this happened in the privacy of my own home. His name was Troy. His name wasn't Troy. (laughs) No Troy around this time. Was his name Bucky? I'll just say his name was George, and we'll leave it at that. Okay. Okay. John, when there was 11 of a party for you? A nice, quiet corner where I can read. Oh, wait, what? You know, there's always those little alcoves where nobody is. You just duck in there and like crack open a book and be like, okay, you all be over there. I was going to say bean dip. That's not bad. Chips and dip. You know, if you don't have that at a party, what the fuck are you doing? I would also say karaoke, but Tori beat me to it. I don't know. I mean, I mean, if you go to a party, there's no fucking chips or dip. What the fuck? I mean. It's like it, it sells the because party. they're busy drinking booze. Well, okay. What are you gonna eat? Your what are you gonna have the booze with? More booze. Right. You need something to wash that 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 those booze down. You're right. I'll wash down them four shots of tequila with a glass of vodka lemonade. That sounds delicious, but I need chips and dip. <laughs> pace myself, Ryan. I need to pace myself. I need chips and dip. Give me the bean dip. Give me the cheese dip. Give me give me some salsa. Christ. Chips and dip are a very important part of my party, so we don't have that, we're fucked. Yeah. Well. Got a little emotional there. there. I'm sorry, guys. But that's it for us tonight. We are the Whip Podcast. You can find us on YouTube.com slash BlackNapple101, Twitter.com slash BlackNapple101, or on Facebook slash The Whip Podcast. Uh, if you have a like, comment, if you have a like, if you have a question or comment or rant or whatever, submit them onto the Tumblr page. Uh, be sure to give us a like, comment, subscribe if you liked our liked our material. Uh, be sure to check out Ryan's gaming channel and John's Facebook page. You guys, go ahead and plug your stuff really quick. Uh, you go first, Professor. Oh, okay. Um, website is <laughs> icebrassrevolution.com. A E S Brass Revolution, all one word. dot com. On Facebook, you can find it as AES Brass right after the Facebook. Uh, also on Twitter as AES Brass. And email is AES Brass. Oh my god, it's all the same. That's on purpose. And you can find my broadcasting at twitch.tv slash silverfist91. And uh, starting tomorrow, that is October 8th to the October 12th, I'll be broadcasting both Arc Survival Evolved, and the open beta for Star Wars Battlefront, which I'm kind of hyped for because it looks legit. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be going to uh, Game Expo this weekend. I'll give you guys a report on that uh, for the next podcast. <laughs> All right, guys. Any last words? Any last words? Before, uh, any last words before we sign off? Fuck you, At- Nightwear Woman. At RealmsCon, dreams do come true. Well, I mean, Until somebody screams in your ear, and then you have a vendetta against that person for the rest of your days. I wouldn't say all dreams. I mean, you didn't have double Bucky sex with Steve watching on the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you, you didn't get him pregnant with your eggs, so you know, there was no egg laying. <laughs> oh, oh God, my God. God. <laughs> Can we stop? <laughs> And that's it, that's it, everybody. Good night. It was an egg laying. Egg laying. <laughs> and we're good. We're what the fuck, John? Oh. John.